Today we are going to talk about articles, nouns and determiners. Firstly, I will give you the definition of an article. An article is a word that is used alongside a noun to indicate the type of reference being made by the noun. Definite or indefinite meaning. We use the indefinite article a n plus singular countable noun to refer to any one of a kind of group when a noun is mentioned for the first time. For instance, I'd like an apple. Anne is a doctor. I've got a cold. I met a nice girl on holiday. We use the definite article the plus countable, uncountable or plural noun when the noun refers to something specific or unique or to something already mentioned. For instance, let's go to the park. What's the capital of your country? The weather is awful. Which is the longest river in the world? Now, let's, let's talk about general meaning. We use zero article plus plural countable noun or countable noun to make generalizations. I like cats better than dogs. Here you see no article, zero one. Water contains oxygen. Modern life is stressful. We can also use an to refer to all examples of the same kind. A doctor earns more than a teacher. We can use the to refer to a whole class. Before singular nouns for specific inventions or musical instruments. The whale is a mammal. Who invented the computer? Or I play the piano. Before plural nationality adjectives and some adjectives with plural meaning. The Americans, the Japanese, the old, the rich. We use the before superlative adjectives as well. The best, the most expensive, etc. So other uses of articles. We use an with expressions of quantity and frequency. For instance, a half, a couple, a million, an hour, twice a week. We use the with plural names of countries, oceans, seas, rivers, deserts, mountain regions, groups of islands and regions. For instance, the United States, the Pacific, the North Sea, the Thames, the Sahara, the Alps, etc. We also use the with names of hotels, cinemas, theaters, museums and newspapers. For instance, the Hilton, the Odeon Cinema, the National Theater, the Natural History Museum, the Times. We use zero article with names of continents and most countries, states, cities, towns, mountains, lakes, streets and roads, parks, shops, restaurants and some magazines. For example, Europe, no article, Spain, California, Paris, Mount Everest, Lake Ontario, Oxford Street, etc. We also use zero article with meals, games, sports, subjects, languages, some illnesses and institutions. Lunch, chess, tennis, maths, Italian, sunburn, cancer, etc. Now let's talk about types of a noun. There are two main types of noun, common nouns and proper nouns. A common noun is any noun that is not the name of a particular person, place or thing. Common nouns can be countable or uncountable. For instance, a queen, queens, a boy, boys. A proper noun names an individual person, place or thing and is spelled with a capital letter. Proper nouns include 
the names of people and titles when we are referring to specific people. Helen, Mr. Smith, the President, the Queen of Sweden. Now places, some examples of places. Thailand, Vancouver, the Tower of London. Nationalities, nationalities and languages. British, Turkish. Days and months, but not seasons. Monday, July. Titles of books, newspapers, films and paintings. For example, Crime and Punishment. The Daily Telegraph. R religions and festivals. Buddhist, Buddhism, Christianity, etc. Easter, Ramadan. Now, countable or uncountable nouns. Countable nouns have a singular and plural form. Singular countable nouns can be used with a n, an appointment, two appointments. Uncountable nouns don't have a plural form and can be used with a n. They are followed by a singular verb. They refer to substances we think of as a mass or to abstract ideas. For instance, bread, water, air, life, love, etc. Some common uncountable nouns are accommodation, advice, beauty, behavior, bread and any types of food as well, English and other languages, equipment, exercise, food, furniture, health, information, knowledge, luggage, mess, and other subjects as well, money, music, news, permission, progress, research, scenery, steel, and other metals, success, traffic, travel, trouble, water, and other liquids, weather, work. Next, some ING words for activities and also uncountable. Dancing, running, swimming. Swimming is one of the best forms of exercise. No article. We can use countable noun plus of to count many uncountable nouns. For instance, a kilo of sugar, a liter of milk, a bottle of shampoo, a can of color, a cup of coffee. Some nouns can be countable or uncountable, often with a change of meaning. For example, beauty is only skin deep. Here the word beauty is uncountable noun. And she is a beauty. In this sentence, beauty is countable. <clears throat> now we shall speak about adjectives and adverbs. Firstly, position and order of adjectives. Adjectives can come before a noun. They can also come after linking verbs. Appear, be, become, feel, get, grow, keep, look, seem, smell, sound, stay, taste and turn. She is an intelligent woman. In the summer it gets very hot. The leaves of the trees turned red and brown in autumn. Some adjectives can only come before a noun. For example, chief, elder, indoor, inner, main, only, outdoor, outer, principal. Some adjectives can only come after a verb. Fine, ill, well. For example, how is she? She's fine. Afraid, alike, alive, alone, asleep, awake. He was alone and felt frightened. Glad, sorry, upset. You seem upset. What's wrong? If there is more than one adjective before a noun, there is the most common order. Firstly, opinion. Secondly, size, then other qualities, age, shape, color, origin, material, and type. We don't usually use commerce between the adjectives before a noun. An ugly concrete building, a tiny round brass button, 
a difficult new theory. If there are two adjectives of the same type before the noun, we can join them with and. When there are more than two adjectives, with you, we use commas and and before the last adjective. The order of adjectives is usually not important in these cases. It's a violent and shocking film, for example. Or she wants a stable, warm and loving relationship. We always use and to join two color adjectives and after linking verbs. The boy wore a red and blue shirt. It's small and lightweight. Now adjectives or adverb. Adjectives describe a noun or pronoun. For example, there was a magnificent view from the top of the mountain. But adverbs describe verbs. We form many adverbs by ad adding li mm, to an adjective. For example, bed, badly, easy, easily, economic, economically. Some words that end in li are adjectives but not adverbs. For example, friendly, lively, lonely, silly. We can't make adverbs from them, so we use an adverbal phrase. In a friendly way. She greeted me in a friendly way. Some adjectives and adverbs have the same form. Early, fast, free, hard, high, late, straight, wide. Let's catch the early train to London. Or we arrived at the train station early. Some adjectives form two adverbs with different meanings. Free, free or freely. Hard, hard or hardly. High, high or highly, etc. He works hard. I hardly know him. I've been really tired lately. Now, what about the position and order of adverbs? Adverbs and adverbal phrases can come in different positions in a sentence. At the beginning, in the middle or at the end. The position depends partly on the kind of adverb or adverbal phrase and what we want to emphasize in the sentence. Adverbs of frequency such as always, often, rarely usually come before the main verb but after an auxiliary verb or the verb be. For instance, we sometimes meet for lunch. I have always wanted to go there. Some adverbs of frequency, such as often, sometimes, occasionally, can also come at the beginning or end of the sentence. The position at the beginning gives the adverb greater emphasis. For example, she helps me sometimes or sometimes she helps me. Adverbal phrases of frequency can come at the beginning or end of a sentence, not in the middle. I go shopping on Fridays. On Fridays, I go shopping. Now, adverbs of manner, place and time. If there is more than one kind of adverb in a sentence, the order is usually manner, place, time. I lived happily in Singapore for many years. The most neutral position for adverbs or adverbal phrases of manner is that at the end of a sentence, they did their work quietly or they did it without a fuss. For greater emphasis, they can come at the beginning of the sentence. Slowly, he opened the door. Adverbs of manner ending in li can also come between the subject and the main verb for greater emphasis. He stupidly went out without locking the door. The most neutral position for adverbs or adverbal phrases or place and time is at the end of the sentence. I bought these shoes in a market or I saw Gina yesterday. For greater emphasis, they can come at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, in Crete, we stayed at a hotel near the beach. 
Some indefinite adverbs of time can come between the subject and the main verb. For instance, I recently changed my job. No, but I last month changed my job. It's a mistake. I recently changed my job. Next. Now we are going to talk about tenses. Present simple or present continuous. Present simple. We use present simple to talk about permanent situations. Example. I live in London, but I come from Canada. We also use the present simple for habitual actions or routines or events or actions that happen regularly, often with a time expression or an adverb of frequency. We see each other every day. She always catches the 8 o'clock train. It shows here in the winter. It snows here in the winter. For a general truth or statement of fact, water boils at 100 degrees, cat don't like water. In, also in instructions or directions, to get to my house you take the first turning on the left. In film reviews and plot summaries, Pollock gives a plausible performance in the lead, in the lead role or the thrills are non-stop as the bus speeds out of control. In sports com commentaries to describe what is happening as the commentator speaks, Beckham passes the ball to Cole and he scores. These adverbs of frequency and time expressions are often used with the present simple. Never, hardly, ever, rarely, seldom, occasionally, sometimes, frequently, often, usually, always. Example, I sometimes work late. Or every day, every week, in the morning, in the evening, on Monday, on Tuesday, once a week, once a year, I get up early in the morning. What about present continuous? We use the present continuous for activities and situations that are temporarily. I am only staying here for a short time. We also use the present continuous for actions in progress at the moment of speaking. What are you doing here? Or, I am taking a break. Or, situations that are changing. Traffic is getting worse every year. Or, annoying habits with always. You are always forgetting your keys. These time expressions are often used with the present continuous. Always, still, currently, I'm still working for the same company, I'm currently working for the same company, at present, at the moment, right now, etc. Now, what about present perfect? We use the present perfect for states of a single or repeated actions that happened at an unspecified unspecif time in the past. The exact time is not important. Diana has been ill quite often recently. I've seen the film, but I haven't read the book. We often use expressions of frequency with the present perfect. Often, once, twice, several times, the first, second time, uh, ever, never. They've visited Spain several times. This is the first time I've met his parents. Have you ever ridden a camel? It's the best meal I've ever eaten. She's never been to Belgium. We use the past simple uh, for finished events or actions that happened at a definite time in the past. We usually say when they are happened using expressions like yesterday, last week, last month, last year, two days ago. For example, I ran her last week from Tokyo. And compare, I've been to Spain, but I've never been to Portugal, or I went to Spain last year, it's past simple. Have you ever eaten octopus? Yes, I ate it when I was on holiday last year. Note the difference between have been and have gone. Uh, Richard's been to Spain, Richard's gone to Spain. <clears throat> now, present perfect. Uh, we use the present perfect for recently completed single actions, when the result of the action is important in the present. 
For example, I have broken my leg. Its result, I can't walk. Or we often use just or already, soon as unexpected and yet for emphasis. Notice the word order. The taxi has just arrived. Or she's already told them what happened. They've finished their work already. Have you already eaten? Have they finished yet? He hasn't seen the film yet. We can also use recently. It means a short time ago. Have you spoken to them recently? We use the past simple for a completed past action, which does not affect the present. You may compare. Have you had a good holiday? Or did you have a good holiday? It's past simple. In American English, people often use the past simple instead of the present perfect. <clears throat> Next. We use the present perfect with for and since to talk about states, events or actions that began in the past and continue up to now. We use for plus a period of time and since plus a point in time. For a month, three years or ages, since 2004 or I was four. Since 2004, I was four. I've known each other for years. Or we've known each other since 1997. We use the past simple for states, events or actions that began and ended in the past. We can't use present perfect here. We can use for to talk about the finished period of time. She's been a doctor for 20 years. It means she's, she's still a doctor. Or, she was a doctor for 20 years. It means she isn't a doctor now. It was in the past. Or, how long has he been in the army? The answer, for five years. It means he's still in the army. It's present perfect. And how long was he in the army? The answer, for five years, but he isn't in the army now. That's why it's, we use here past simple. To talk about an unfinished time period. We use the present perfect with expressions such as today, this morning, this week. We use the past simple for a finished time period. Have you been busy this morning? It's still morning, so we can't use it. We can't use past simple here. Were you busy this morning? It's past simple already because it's evening now. Next. Present perfect or present perfect continuous. <clears throat> present perfect. We use the present perfect simple to describe an activity that is complete. I've read several books about windsurfing. I have finished them. We have the result. Or to emphasize the result or consequence of a completed action. We've already seen that film. It means we don't want to see it again. Or to say how often something has happened. He's read that book twice. To describe a permanent state. She's lived here for six years. That is her home now. Now, what about present perfect continuous? Compare. We use present perfect continuous to describe an activity that is incomplete. I've been reading a book about windsurfing. It means I haven't finished it yet. Or, to focus on an activity, not the result or consequence of that activity. You look tired. What have you been doing? I've been working hard. Next, to emphasize how long an activity has been going in. He's been reading that book for over two weeks. Next, to describe a temporary state or activity. She's been living here for six months, but she intends to move. We don't use the present perfect continuous with verbs describing an action that lasts a short time. For example, begin, break, finish, start, stop. He started a new job. We can't say he's been starting a new job. It's a mistake. So we must use present perfect now, but not present perfect continuous. Thank you.